Hey guys, this is Tomek from storagefreak.net. In this video I want to show you how you can utilize PuTTY to access your Linux virtual machine on Google Cloud. There are two ways you can follow. Either use SSH keys to authenticate or modify the VM to accept normal login password requests. I will show you both ways, starting with creation of Linux Debian virtual machine with all the default settings. So if you plan to establish an SSH session from the external network, First, it's good to verify if the firewall rules will accept the traffic. So it should be opened on the port 22. To do that, you can navigate to the network section, VPC, and go for the firewall rules um, settings. If you haven't put any changes here, there should be already a rule created default allow SSH. If that exists, you are all set. It basically means that the port 22 on protocol TCP is open from the internet. I will navigate back to compute instance VM list to get external IP address and try to connect via PuTTY right now. Since I will connect to this IP address for the first time, I might see the security alert in PuTTY asking if I want to add this fingerprint, and I do. Um, as long as you see the message asking for the username, it means the traffic is working fine and nothing is blocked on the firewall level, neither from my network or from the GCP side. This is good news, however when I provide the username, any username, I get this error. That's because by default the password authentication is disabled and I have to use SSH keys to make a connection. So how can you do it with PuTTY? You should have add-on program called PuTTYGen in which you can generate your own private and public key pair. I'm doing that right now, moving my mouse like crazy to generate some randomness. Key command is actually the username you want to use to connect to your machine. I'll use Adam as an example. Now, I will save the private key without any passphrase, which means that once you have a key and IP address, you can make it a connection. So the private key is important and you should never share that with anyone. Let's just save it. And in the text field window, this is our public key. I will copy it all and add it to the virtual machine instance. To do so, I have to go for the instance details, click the edit button, find the SSH key section, and just add my key um, to the properties of this virtual machine. I will say that one more time. You add the public key to the virtual machine. Private key is private, so by default you don't share it. And as you can see, GCP already recognized which user will be used. It's Adam in this case. And let's save the results. The saving process might take around 5, 10, maybe 15 seconds stop. But in the background, the interesting thing is going on. GCP is connecting to the Debian machine we created and adding the user Adam with the public key we just added. We can verify that by checking the console logs. There should be an entry that the user Adam has been created and it's even added to the sudo rs group which should give the user the sudo right. In other words, he can access sudo account. Um, so, let's copy the external IP address and try to connect via PuTTY again, this time using our private key that is assigned to the username Adam. Uh, the private key you can specify in the SSH auth section and uh, there's a place to point to the file. Let's do it right now. That's the key we saved previously. And that's pretty much it. Now you do have an option to save the session because if you're going to connect again and again, you probably want to have those information saved. But since I'm doing that right now, I will not save it. Let's try to connect to either way. We still have to specify the user, but that's enough because the private key meets our public key, so we are connected right away. And as I mentioned, this user can authenticate to the super user shell. Let me do it right now. Let's assume you don't want to use SSH keys. You want to be able to connect via old-fashioned username and password style from any place in the internet. For that, we'll have to put a small modification in SSHD settings. So I will edit the settings file, as you can see on the screen, and change one variable. I'll use Vim, and I'm working as a root user, so I do have privileges to do so. I will just modify password authentication to yes, and save the results. 
Now the last step would be to restart the service SSHD. I'll do it right now. Alright, all we need is the user to which we want to connect using login and password. Let me create username Tomek, specify the password and some basic information about the user that the form is asking me about. Uh, we don't have to provide all the information, I think name is enough. Uh, accepting the information and, and that's it. Believe it or not, all the changes are done. Let me click the root session and close Adam and let's try to connect to the same host using same external IP but this time without any SSH keys we will just provide username and password for user Tomek. So placing the external IP address and trying to log in as Tomek. I'm asked about the password because there is no authentication key and I'm connected. Voila, that's it. I'm username Tomek. I can run some commands. Um, to show you you don't need SSH key anymore, let me exit this session, edit my instance again to remove the key and you definitely want to do it whenever you suspect your private key is not private anymore because for example you shared that even by accident. So you can just remove it, save the, in save the changes, everything is online, you don't have to reboot your machine and the key will not work anymore. So you don't have to worry about it anymore. However, we can still connect via SSH using username and password because we modified our SSHD settings on the host and we created username, password, so everything is all set. You can connect to the machine all style. Of course, you have to think about the security issues doing that this way because right now anyone on the internet who knows IP address, login and password could make the connection. Okay, I guess that's it. Now you should know how to connect to Linux instance using either SSH keys or do some small change in the configuration to be able to use username and password to make the connection using any SSH client such as Pali. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.